The Pittsburgh Steelers are officially done with their third and final week of OTAs, and next week will be the start of mandatory minicamp. But this video is just going to recap of what happened this week and the winners and the big news that happened. The first week of OTAs, I did the same thing. I said Kelvin Austin was a big winner. The second week, I said Mark Robinson and Corey Trace was also a big winner. But now, for the third and final week, Mark Robinson once again is a really big winner of OTAs. Because Mark Robinson has been a subject of a lot of commentary at the Steelers OTAs with an impressive interception returned for a touchdown off of Kenny Pickett during the week. And also, after that, the next day, he was rewarded for making plays and he actually got first team reps at the inside linebacker position next to Alandon Roberts. So, Alandon Roberts confirmed that he did get first team reps alongside Mark Robinson. A week prior though, Cole Holcomb, who the Steelers signed this offseason from the Washington Commanders to be inside linebacker, he did say a few weeks ago that the Steelers are bringing him along slowly. So Mark Robinson getting first team reps can be a byproduct of that, of kind of easing Cole Holcomb into the starting job and getting limited reps. But it could also be that the coaches want to see an extended look at Mark Robinson and reward him for his play on the field after getting an interception for a touchdown prior in the week. Elanon Roberts at practice had this to say. Here's his quote. I worked next to Mark. I'm always glad to have a chance to work next to them all, but it's all different. Me and Mark have been together for the most part, though. When I get a chance to go with anyone else, it just means I have to hone in on communication and other things. Even though it's only OTAs and it's only practice, and it's really the beginning of the off-season type of workouts, it can still mean a lot for Mark Robinson. Because when you watched Mark Robinson play last year, what you thought of him is a pure tackler. He wasn't a guy who was going to make plays in zone coverage, man coverage. He was brought in and actually given an opportunity late in the season to actually start a game against a team and show his capabilities next to Robert Splane, but he was brought in to be the run stuffer. He was always taken down, I mean taken out on third downs, so he wasn't really known as a zone coverage, man coverage guy, but just showcasing some skills there in OTAs could be a good sign to put some film on coaches and kind of show coaches that you could do both. Because if you could cover and you could stop the run, there's really no limitations on your game. And it gives the coaches no reason to take you out of the game. And it gives the coaches more reason to put you in. He's a guy who's really a hit stick type of player. He's going to lay the boom on you and make you feel him whenever he tackles you. But if he's able to get interceptions and able to make plays on zone coverage as well, that could be a good opportunity for him to get more playing time this upcoming season with no real second linebacker on the team. And that's kind of an open job right now. Like I said, it's only OTAs, but in the coming weeks with mandatory minicamp, training camp, preseason, and even the beginning of the regular season, hopefully he's able to build off the success that he has early on and be a guy who makes a lot of upside plays. Because he's coming in as a seventh round pick for the Steelers, the Steelers really had no reason to keep on the roster. But as of right now, he's a guy who's making a point and making a name for himself for the Steelers to stick around with him and give him a chance. He's a guy who obviously Mike Tomlin likes because he's bringing physicality to the position. And we all know Mike Tomlin likes physicality, especially the linebackers, to not be afraid and not be afraid to go at the running back and offensive line. So he's making a name for himself and hopefully now he gets more opportunities and is able to build off of that. You have to think with Mark Robinson too. Who would have thought a seventh round pick who is a running back transitioning into inside linebacker? He's only played a linebacker for a couple of years now. Who would have thought at this stage he would be so far along and actually be an impact player at the position for the Steelers in the seventh round being drafted. Next, let's talk about the next subject, Keanu Neal. Keanu Neal was brought in to replace Troll Edmonds this offseason when Troll Edmonds went to the Philadelphia Eagles. So Keanu Neal was brought in as a strong safety, but now early on in OTAs, he's getting a lot of work at linebacker and at safety. I'm not going to get too deep into this one, but 
throughout his career, he's actually played a lot of positions. He's played nickel, he's played safety, he's played both safety positions, he's played linebacker, and when he was with the Cowboys, he moved all around the field. So right now, the Steers are not really quite sure on who's going to be their dime linebacker. It's not really set in stone, so they're trying new things. And Keanu Neal, in practice, that's a position he was kind of playing this week, testing out at linebacker and at safety, showcasing versatility and unique skill set. So I want to make an own video kind of covering what Keanu Neal will bring to the table for the Steelers this season because he can really wear a lot of hats for this defense, which the Steelers like to do. We all know the Steelers love versatility with their players and Keanu Neal brings that to the table. And last season with DeMonte Casey, Terrell Edmonds, and also Minka Fitzpatrick, they started doing a lot of more three safety looks. So hopefully now this season, we see a lot more of that and it succeeds. So a next person who I want to talk about and kind of a big story, I already kind of talked about him earlier in the week. I made a video specifically on Alfonso Graham showing up and kind of challenging Minka Fitzpatrick to a one-on-one -on -one drill, tackling drill. He didn't really succeed. But Alfonso Graham is someone to keep an eye on for the Steelers roster. He's coming in as undrafted free agent, which the Steelers signed right after rookie minicamp. So Graham, he not only just challenged Minka Fitzpatrick, he's actually been producing as well in OTAs and drills. He actually made a spectacular spinning catch along the sideline over two defenders, and he said he's working more on receiving the ball. Here's his quote. I just focused on the ball with my eye, discipline. Once I got here, I'm learning how to catch the ball better. I can make those plays. I know I belong here, but that's definitely a play I can put on tape. So obviously, he has the right mentality to make a real push for the Steelers 53-man roster. Usually, the Steelers carry three running backs. And as I said in my previous video, that third running back spot is wide open and a real competition with him and Anthony McFarland Jr working towards that third running back spot. But that's not to mention, Anthony Farley Jr. has also been making plays at OTAs and has been producing as well, receiving the ball and kind of doing screen plays and also running the ball as well. So not only is Alfonso Graham kind of producing in OTAs, but Anthony Farley Jr. isn't doing anything to lose the job either. It's just that that one play is being really talked about with Alfonso Graham. So, can we see more play action this year? Can we see running backs get more involved in the offense? Can we see inside linebackers new look for the Steelers defense with Mark Robinson being a starter maybe? Or even Keanu Neal moving to inside the linebacker to help cover bigger tight ends? Let me know down in the comments below. And also, let me know down in the comments below, how do you feel about Mark Robinson getting first team reps for the Steelers defense? Do you like it? Do you like what he brings to the table for the Steelers? Do you like the Steers having a three-look safety look for the defense as well with Keanu Neal, DeMonte KZ, and Mick Fitzpatrick? And do you believe either Anthony McFarland Jr. or Alfonso Graham will make the team? Let me know who you think out of those two will make it. These are the big storylines of the week, but I could also talk about more winners like Tanner Moose, who the Steers brought in to be a special teams ace. He's actually played linebacker in the dime, and he's actually had an interception in this week and has really performed really good in the dime work that he's gotten at linebacker in sub packages. I could talk about Jalen Warren. He put on a lot of weight, and he looks a lot stronger. Najee Harris obviously looks like a beast, and even just our regular stars getting more healthy, getting more work done. I could talk about all that, but these are the big storylines for this week that really probably get unnoticed. And I really want to talk about the players that really don't get talked about a lot throughout the season. Because those players who are obviously the stars for the team, they get talked about a lot. But these guys are working towards their goal of being a starter and making the roster. So I just want to cover them more. And this is it for the week. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well if this year's content analysis supports. Like the video, turn on post notifications down below for the channel as well so you get notified whenever I post next year's video. I covered all the OTAs first week, second week, third week. As we move into mandatory minicamp, just know I'm covering it all. And then training camp, preseason, regular season, all the way back into the draft 
repeat the whole cycle over again, just know I'm covering everything, Steelers news, rumors, and everything like that. And all the introductions to the new players, they're on the channel, so if you want to go watch it, go ahead. So, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all later. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.